Welcome to this week's edition of Travel Tips here on Back to the Peaceful Sea. Today we're talking about booking flights, how to find the cheapest ones, mistakes to avoid, and generally, flights. <laughs> Today, we'll be delving into insane detail about the specifics of booking a flight, uh, how to find the cheapest one, what mistakes to avoid, uh, things like that to help you find the absolute cheapest flight uh, to get to your destination. Yeah, because booking that flight can be kind of daunting. Clicking that purchase button is, get a little hesitant. Especially if they're kind of foreign websites that you're not used to, to going on to. It can be, it can be odd and, and kind of scary and then some new places, so. So let's get to it. Our favorite website is Skyscanner. Um, Skyscanner, you can do a whole bunch of great stuff with. So let's say you wanted to fly to where? Uh, let's Dublin. Say, sure. you go to Dublin? Let's go to All right, Dublin. let's go to Dublin. You can say, I want to go to Jub Dublin, one-way flight, because you don't know when, what exactly the days you want to get back. And sometimes booking a one-way flight is cheaper than booking a round-trip flight. Yeah, booking two one-way flights. Yeah. So you can say, come in here, you can do a whole month, or you can say, what's the cheapest month? I just want to go sometime because I am flexible. And you click search flights, scroll down, it shows you the cheapest month, which would be June of this year. That's extremely surprising. Um, but you can book a flight to Dublin from New York for $113. And when you click show flights, and it'll pull up exactly what you wanted. On the app, it's slightly different. You can't just search for cheapest month. Um, but if you are doing it from the app, uh, if you go in here and you click on the dates, it'll show you below the date, little green or orange or sometimes red dots. And that's how you know what's generally cheaper. It doesn't show the exact price, but you'll know generally the cheapest days to go and to come. And um, so, you know, say you wanna go from the 21st of August, which is a green, and come back on the 28th. Uh, we'll search that, that's a week in Dublin. I'm going round trip. Uh, let's see, we'll compare what's cheaper between the two. And yeah, so sometimes it can be actually very frustrating because what showed up um, on the month price is not what's actually showing up here. So in this case, I would go back I would go to a month that isn't during summer. So no June, no July, preferably no August. I'd click on September, look at the flights. Got some for, got one for 120 right here. Let's click on that one. Let's see if it actually shows up as 120. Turn you off. 155, 145, a little lower than last time. Once it gets down, once the progress bar gets right here, that's pretty much what the price is going to be. Um, Still not bad. 143 is not bad. Oh, 141. 141. Look at that. However, it would be nice if Skyscanner updated their database more quickly because sometimes this is what you get instead of the price that you saw at the beginning. Okay. So, ending price was 141. Um, so let's say, let's try a new one. Let's go February. February is actually pretty expensive. It's rarely gonna be lower than this. It will almost always be higher, if it is higher at all. Um, December, so it really looks like uh, September was probably the cheapest month to go. Where? Check out the 12th, November 12th. So it looks like the cheapest flight right now that you can find to Dublin is $141. That seems to be pretty consistent. Um, so once this happens, if you say, okay, that seems like a good date, uh, Monday, November 12th, you select whichever flight you prefer, uh, fly out at noon, from Stewart International, get in, get in to Dublin at 11.45 p.m. on a six hour and 25 minute flight. And then it gives you all these different options to, 
to uh, buy or fly at all these different websites. I'll redirect you to Viyama. Here is a tip that I discovered um, recently is if you book through a third party, not through the airline. So if you're flying Norwegian Airlines, if you can book through Norwegian, not through a third party website for about the same price, you want to do that. Because if you miss your flight for whatever reason, um, it's far, far easier to deal with them directly than have to deal with the, the third party like Expedia or somebody like that. Uh, because they can help you out directly. They don't have to talk to somebody else and, and, and do all that. And, and I got screwed on a Alaskan Airlines flight because of this and they wanted to charge me a thousand bucks to change my flight when I missed it. Um, so make sure if it's anywhere close, if it's within $10, even 15 or $20, it's better to book through the airline just in case something happens and you miss a flight. Uh, especially when you're going abroad, you know, things can happen that, that you don't foresee. So if possible, always try to book through the airline uh, just to avoid any hangups or any trouble down the road. I would agree. So now we're over on the Norwegian flight. We always use Skyscanner to look for flights, but then we try to book through the actual airline's website um, because he's right. It is, it can be much cheap, it can be cheaper as well as it can make it easier to cancel or change your flight if you needed to. Um, so this one, it's cheaper. Much, much cheaper. $114. So you just saved yourself 30 bucks. 20, just about 27 bucks. $27 because you decided to go to Norwegian.com. Um, that is definitely one of the best tips that we can give you is search for the cheapest on here because it's the easiest way to search. And generally, the days will be about the same. So you won't get like, um, like all, all the days that are cheap on Skyscanner are typically gonna be the cheapest for the airline. It's not gonna be, you know, like these $500 gaps in between. So you can still search for the cheapest days on Skyscanner and those if you cross over onto the airline's website, it's typically gonna be about the same the cheapness of the day is gonna be similar. So once you're on Norwegian and you're trying to book your flight, you can start the reservation. You're gonna to need to know if you're gonna be, if you're gonna have a bag or not, if you're gonna be checking a bag, or if you're just carrying on. Most airlines will not charge for one personal item. Some will charge for the second personal item, but almost every airline will charge for a checked bag. Um, you can see the baggage allowances here. Um, you can always bring one carry-on bag in the cabin free of charge on Norwegian. Awesome. You can also bring one small personal item on board. Awesome. So you can bring on your personal item and your carry-on for free, which is all I travel with anyway, so that's amazing. And keep in mind, some of these airlines charge outrageous check bag fees like Ryanair. If you are overpacked and they're just things you can't fit in, just calculate how much it's gonna to cost to buy certain things when you arrive to save money on the checked bag. Maybe you can save 20 or 30 bucks by buying things when you land rather than packing them and paying for that checked bag. Um, so there's always ways to you know, save 20, 30 bucks here that now you can use you know, to go to the Guinness brewery and, and get yourself a, get yourself an awesome tour, things like that. So uh, make sure to calculate all those things out because you know at the end of the day you do want to save the most money on things that, that can be saved rather than things you want to do. True. Um, and on Norwegian, low fare, no bags included. Low fare plus one bag of 44 pounds, which is 20 kilograms, and on flex, two bags. So let's go back to our our original booking page real quick and see what the prices were on that. So oh, there you go. low fare is 114, low fare plus is 184, and the flex, which gives you all sorts of perks like priority boarding at selected airports, seat reservation, up to two meals on board. Um, you'll be able to fully change your flight up to 30 minutes, get a full refund if your plans change. That's the expensive version. Don't do um, it. It doesn't. It's not, not worth it. it. 
normally you can convince them to uh, give you at least most of your money back, if not all, or change your flight for sometimes a small fee, sometimes for free. Pretty much just depends on who you get. Yeah. Um, but the low fare, um, you get one checked bag. So, um, what would the, uh, I forgot to check on what the baggage allowance, what the, how would you purchase it? Checked bags, checked baggage purchased at the airport. Um, for a direct flight for international, it's a hundred dollars. So if you're checking a bag on Norwegian, it's much cheaper just to get the low fare version. It's $20 cheaper. It's much cheaper just to, to, to carry on everything you need. And, and cause it's a $70 difference. So say, you know, you need to carry on uh, a jacket or something like that, or some extra shoes. Uh, you can probably buy those things for less than 70 bucks. You can probably buy some cheap shoes from somewhere for 20 bucks and a jacket for like 20 bucks and save 30 bucks. So uh, again, just keep those things in mind as you're going, wear your bulkiest stuff on the flight because then you're not packing it. Mm -hmm. um, so just do all those little things that can save, you know, 20, 30, 40 bucks uh, that you can spend on, on fun stuff once you're there. So as we continue with the reservation through Norwegian, gotta enter your name, Redress number, don't know what that is. For travelers who have been repeatedly identified for additional screening, I'd be one of them. Um, date of birth, normally you gotta choose your passport if you're leaving the country. Um, that would be on a further page. I'm not gonna put all my information here because yeah, I wouldn't do that either. <laughs> don't want it out there. Um, hand baggage only, $45. One bag, $45. Hmm. Huh. So they do charge you? No, no, hand baggage only. Oh, oh. And then one bag, $45, checking. So you don't even want the flex plus, you'd rather just do it from here. Yeah, the, yeah, interesting. It is interesting. Low fare plus. The flex is something else. Yeah, the low fare plus. Check bags, two bags, $95. Check bag, one bag, $45. Nice. $45 is not a bad deal for checking a bag. Um, especially if you're a heavy packer, which we would advise to never be a heavy packer. Um, but if you are, $45 is not bad. Another cool thing about Skyscanner is the ability to search everywhere. So let's say we want to leave New York, we want to just go somewhere. So let's do everywhere. And then we can select, on the computer, we can select the cheapest month. On the phone, you have to search a little harder. Um, so let's search for everywhere for the United States from $39, Canada from $73, Martinique from $83. What do you got? I'm doing August 21st. Um, okay. Kind of a midsummer, still kind of the end of, of summer uh, type deal. You're looking at Bermuda for $84, bucks. Puerto Rico $104. This is from New York also. The Virgin Islands $111. Um, Colombia, which we just did a uh, 10 day trips on, so check that out because Colombia could be great for 120 bucks. Mexico, Iceland for 127, guys. Um, so a lot of great stuff. Uh, Ireland for 148 it's on there, Cuba 150. So a lot of great places if you just search everywhere. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's select Costa Rica. Okay. Let's see where we can go. I'm at my lowest price for the Cheapest possible month is $128. Mine as well. Okay, so and then let's go to San Jose. Yeah. Beautiful. For $128, let's see if it pops up correctly. $128. I'm looking at August 28th. Yeah, I'm August 21st. Okay, beautiful. Oh yeah, August 21st would work as well. Let's see if it actually shows up as $128. Oh, there it is. Spirit Airlines, $128 flight from New York to Costa Rica. Pretty Only awesome. take a carry-on. <laughs> <laughs> Only take a carry-on for Spirit, that is for sure. Those are... But you're going to Costa Rica, so it's not like you need warm weather gear or anything, so you should be able to pack very lightly. Mm -hmm. And again, anything that's extra that you need, you can buy there. I'm sure you can buy flip-flops for like six bucks. So again, from here, I would then open up a new tab Go to spirit.com, 
and make the exact same search, but from here. And so you can scroll down to New York. Where are you? New York to Costa Rica, which is San Jose. And the month and date would be August 21st. You search flights. It'll tell you that you need a passport. <laughs> and actually on the flight, it's $135, which is what, $7 more, $8 more. But again, generally if it's within $10, you would want to do it on the site. Completely agree. Um, just to avoid any, any issues down the line. So plus, if it's close, site. Yeah, plus you can get points on Spirit, which will, um, which could pay for some free flights later. So 135, click it, click continue, and then you go through the exact same process as before. And Again, it is a little bit harder to do this kind of thing if you only have a phone on you just because mm -hmm. you have to download the app, you have to go through the whole process, but at the end of the day, it will be worth it, especially if it's cheaper or if you can book for the same price directly through the, the airline. Mm -hmm. So make sure to book or to, to download the apps of, of the airlines that you could uh, potentially be flying on and, and, um, and, and book through those if, if you have the chance. Um, so yeah, you can go right here to the Spirit app and, uh, and, and book a flight, search the same thing, um, and, and do it from, from the app of the actual, actual airline rather than, rather than doing it through a, a third party on Skyscanner. Mm -hmm. um, and then it'll pop up with these options um, that'll include extra stuff if you want to do it that way. but. Um, I always X out of those. And then you can continue as a guest. And you do the exact same things that you always do. Put in all your info. Um, you're gonna need a, are you gonna need a visa? See at this point, you would do what we said last week, um, which is go to travel.gov, travel.state.gov, type in Costa Rica. Costa Rica, do you need a passport in Costa Rica, visa. or visa? Not required for stays less than 90 days, but return ticket is required. That is one thing that happens. Um, they will not let you into the country if you don't have your flight or your bus or whatever out of the country as well. We ran into this in the UK. Uh, we wanted to go in, uh, but we didn't have a, a return a ticket out because we were just kind of booking as we went and we were gonna be there for a couple weeks. So we didn't have anything out and they really were not obliged to let us into their country. They, they really didn't want to. They held us up at, the, at the, um, the immigration for a while. But eventually they let us in because we showed them our bank accounts and we had plenty of money in there. So they were like, oh, well, these people aren't you know, gonna come in and, and get our welfare. Uh, so they let us in, but typically you want to, to book a, a return ticket if if you're only staying there for a bit. Um, so let's say that you're super cheap and $128 flight to Costa Rica isn't enough. That's when you wanna go get these price alerts. You put your email in, um, you at you.com. Click create alert and it creates an alert for New York to San Jose for August 28th in economy class. And it will send you alert updates whenever the price changes. So it can go up, it can go down, it'll tell you right in the email. Let's see if I have any in my email. So this is what an email from Skyscanner looks like, a price alert email. The price is increased on your search from Venice to New York for Thursday, October 4th from 280, it's now $281, it went up $17. Sometimes that'll be down, sometimes that'll be up, sometimes it'll be the same. If it's been a week with no updates, it'll send you an update saying the price hasn't changed, this is what it is, um, which is super helpful. Cause then you can book it as soon as it's the cheapest that you feel you can afford. There are also a bunch of really cool features here on uh, on the Skyscanner site. You can select when you want your time to be. So like when you want to depart, you can select when you want to depart, um, what time after you know 3 p.m. after 5 p.m. if you have other 
obligations, you can say how long you want your trip dur duration to be. So like for this one, for instance, is seven hours, 34 minutes. It includes one stop, but there's also ones that include no stops. But it's way more expensive, um, but it's only a five hour flight. Um, you can also narrow it down by airline, which is nice. Like, who wants to fly British Airways for $2,700? Yeah, that's, uh, that's not insane. Idea. Um, and then Spirit all the way down here at 128. Um, so, Skyscanner, best tool to use, and then book your flight through the airline's website because that is going to end up saving you a whole bunch of headaches if you have to reschedule or cancel. You can also say add nearby airports, so it'll search within like an 80 mile radius. Um, and you can also say nonstop flights only. Um, you can also do multi-city trips, which could be helpful. I've never actually booked a multi-city trip through Skyscan. So that's something to explore. Um, I'd imagine it's very much like booking just a bunch of one ways, um, which is how we book our flights anyway. Um, just one-way trips. You can also look at hotels and car rentals on here. However, we think there are better sites for both of those things. Yeah, my favorite tool is the can't decide where to go, let's go everywhere, let's search for the cheapest month. Because you can find all these amazing destinations and they show you the cheapest price and the cheapest time to go. Um, like, you know, Germany, $310. Go to Berlin for $310. Non-stops are available. And then I'll show you uh, your round trip flight. If you still can't decide just by looking at lists of countries, you can explore on the map, which is really cool. It has all these prices and the green dots actually don't mean non-stop or don't mean high price, low price. They mean non-stop or one stop. So these are just based on how many flights it takes to get there. One plus stop or non-stop. Non-stop is almost always gonna be more expensive. Um, you can get $220 round trip. It's just the time to go to Iceland. It's always the time to go to Iceland. Round trip for $546 to Kiev. Round trip, $344 to Oslo, $773 to Saudi Arabia. Don't go there. And it'll show you different deals as well. So many great things on Skyscanner. It is what we highly recommend because it works so well. Um, and as we've said, it's just a tool to search. It's not where you want to book it. I don't even know if they actually allow you to book flights through their engine. Um, they always send you to another engine yeah, in order to, to book it. Party, so. so book through the airlines, use Skyscanner to search, um, and just make sure uh, there are some kind of more scammy third party sites. So if you have to book through there, just watch out because there are some ones that will try to get you with fees and stuff. Most of them are pretty good. We we only had issues once, I think, and um, and we ended up booking a slightly more expensive one through someone else because something just didn't quite look right. So uh, just you know, use your use your judgment. Some of them are a little scammy. So yeah, and that's mainly Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. where it's also hard to translate the websites sometimes, yep. so that can get a little difficult. Um, but that's what you want to do, and it's super simple, super easy. Yeah. And it's fun because you can see lists of places that you might want to go someday and see what kind of prices you have to pay to get there. Yep. Um, so that about does it for this week. Uh, definitely drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it or tell us why you didn't. Subscribe to our channel, follow us on all our social media, and keep coming back each week for more travel inspiration and wallet preservation. Back to